Hey, how you doing guys? Lewis here with Fedevo. Today we've got a great tutorial looking at the Particle plugin extension, Particle Pro, which is an extension for the Stardust plugin for After Effects, which is a Particle based plugin. Very complicated, can be quite complex for After Effects newcomers. Particle Pro looks to streamline the process of creating some cool Particle uh, animations in After Effects. So without further ado, Let's jump into the channel. And of course, if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, it really helps the channel. So, okay, so here we have our After Effects composition. I'm just gonna drag this video clip from the Fedevo library. So of a uh, father and his son having a sword fight, uncle and son. Maybe it's just a random man who's trying to attack a kid in the forest. Either way, <laughs> uh, all I'm gonna do here is go to Effect, Oh, let's, let's drag a black solid in first. Go to effect, superluminal, stardust. This is a very advanced particle system. I think it costs like $250 um, to acquire. And from the emitter, the render settings, the physics, the turbulence, the materials, there's a lot to learn when it comes to learning stardust. You know, you may have bought the plugin based on seeing the insane amount of uh, animations and graphics that can be created um, to when you finally install it and you're like, wow, this is actually like kind of learning After Effects from the beginning. Uh, we've got this pop-up menu here and it works in like a node-based structure, kind of similar to um, what you might find in DaVinci Resolve with the color grading or perhaps on the Fusion page. And you know, there's, um, there's a lot to go through. You know, this it's not something I won't sugarcoat. Um, I've been playing around with Stardust for years and even up until this point there are moments I'm like wow I actually this is going to take a few days to kind of figure out. So this is where we can now look to use Particle Pro. As mentioned Particle Pro it's an extension to Stardust not made by the guys at Stardust but by another company uh, that is kind of like a VIP card can take you to the front of the queue with some great uh, particle based animations without having to know how to use status. Now, of course, that might sound too good to be true. And it's not as if you're gonna be able to create the type of animations that you can create from Stardust, but it will give you kind of like a good amount of um, uh, quick tips ahead uh, without having to know the base plugin. So let me just delete this black solid. And I'm actually going to delete that too. Let's just create another um, text layer here. And I'm going to type in, oh, Fedevo. To bring up Particle Pro, once, it's, once you've purchased it and once it's installed, it is an extension. So you need to go to Window, Extensions, Particle Pro. Now we've got this pop-up box here with a preview of the brush elements, point elements, text and objects, shockwave and icon elements. I don't like to have this panel docked down, so I'm just gonna bring this here and then minimize it. And I'm, 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 I'm okay with this. So we have, let me just maybe turn off that. We have icon elements and shockwaves. These are just sort of like built-in animations. You know, like there's a lot of websites that offer free downloads of, of animation presets and, and overlays and stuff. The shockwave and icon elements are kind of like that. You know, like for example, let's just click camera, I click apply icon. And we have this cool camera icon animation based off some of the particle simulations within Stardust to automatically appear. You know, I think these might be good to kind of like throw in if you're creating a fast montage or, you know, some sort of presentation. Outside of that, I'm not too sure where we're going to be using these. So um, we don't have to focus on these uh, in this tutorial. So let's just close this composition. Particle Pro does tend to make compositions when you're applying the effects. So you may have to clean up every so often. Let's see, for example, here I've got this folder. Let's just delete that. So let's go to text and objects. Uh, turn the Fedevo back on. And here we have a number of different animation libraries, which are pointed out by these amazing emojis. And here we can see that there are a variety of different presets based on the type of simulation from fire, smoke, water, even some music animations, fruit, 
you can have your titles change to fruit based on some animations. I'm gonna go to, let's have a look, fire, sand. Let's go to smoke. Okay, let's go to smoke. So you simply select the animation and then go to text, press text. Then you're gonna have a new composition and to what I'm gonna do, let's just put on adaptive resolution. Where are you? Is it on? There it is, adaptive resolution. I'm just gonna click play so the cache renders a few moments later. Okay, so then click play and boom, we've got this like Fedivo sort of evaporating into mist or, or smoke, you could say. It was just one single click. You know, we haven't even entered the status menu. The status menu does not need to exist for um, these animations. Now you might say, uh, do you know what? I don't really like how that smoke is looking. Well, all you do, there is a layer name here called settings, and then you simply go up to the effects controls. And instead of that crazy menu, in fact, if we go to particle pro, uh, the status menu, with the gazillion different parameters to run through in Stardust. There's none of that. We don't need to be intimidated by that stuff. We just go to settings and we have stuff from particle size. Uh, perhaps, you know, let's turn this down to say 50. We've got like a streaky smoke. I think that actually looks a little bit better. Um, and maybe instead what we could have is like a faint blue. Maybe even fainter. Cool, it looks a bit smoky. Smoky's never really white. Um, and then in fact, you know what? It would make a lot more sense if the text direction was evaporating left to right. Uh, so we can change the text direction here, change that to left. And if I script for this, okay, so we now have this really cool sort of like evaporation and fade away. Um, of the Fedivo text, uh, which are, in my opinion looks a lot better from that kind of stock animation where we were at. And all we done was change the particle size and text direction. When you start going in and delving into the wind, which is going to uh, adjust how the text is falling, you can really make some unique animations which look completely different from outside of the built-in presets in Particle Pro. Um, but again, you don't have to go into the uh, insane amount of parameters found in Stardust in order to make some great adjustments. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like how that text fades. It looks very cheap. And in fact, I don't think I want to see the text at all. So in order to remove text when you're using the text or object settings within Particle Pro, see this little icon? It stands for hide all layers. We're gonna click that. And then we've got two pre-coms for the text. Simply gonna turn this off. And now what we have, I click render again. Now we have this really cool like Fedivo smoke effect. Um, in fact, I think if we were to colorize that, we might be able to make it look a little bit sort of like the uh, plants that you find in the coral reef. But anyway, just as a, a quick visual uh, demonstration, we've just created a really cool particle smoke simulation uh, with just one click and a few adjustments from Particle Pro. So we're gonna go back to our sword fight menu. Again, remember I said that it tends to make a lot of pre-comps. I don't like having too many tabs open. Um, so you might wanna close those as you go along. Here, I'm going to delete the text. I'm gonna bring this black solid that I've already made and I'm gonna to go to element 3D. I'm gonna open up the scene setup and I'm just gonna bring in any old 3D object Let's bring in this statue. Uh, do you want, maybe I might make her gold though. Yeah, that's better. Just press OK. That is way too small. Two moments. Let's just bring her slightly. There we go. Uh, now again, what we can do is Particle Pro also works with 3D objects. Now I've used Element 3D, but there's a variety of ways where you can bring in your OBJ files and so forth. Um, and we can do pretty much the same thing. We can go to the, say this water animation, click that. It doesn't say object, it does say text, but you just click that. Again, it's gonna run through its thing, create some uh, more pre-comps. 
and now we've got this 3d object sort of transforming into water if it wants to and and falling away now again i don't think that looks good that sort of fade away so what we will do is go to setting change the direction from top and instead we sort of got this simulation now for where this object is going to fall away from the water if you feel like again that the particle based animation doesn't look too great what we can do is go in and just change the individual parameters without having to roll through the process of even figuring out how to make a particle look like water when in the status menu so this would be the text and objects element of using particle pro very much all you need to do is find the animation preset you like click the text object button it gets animated to your either text or uh, 3d object and then you can go in into the settings menu in the effects controls and individually adjust to see fit are you gonna go are you gonna get an animation a particle based animation that looks just as good as stardust I don't inherently think so but if you don't know how to use stardust and perhaps you've lied and you've said that you did know how to use it and you've got like a deadline coming up where you need to do something cool um, this is going to be a get out of jail free, uh, free card so now we're going to have a look at the point element so i'm going to bring in our friends fighting in the forest this might be my favorite feature from particle pro so all we do, we go to our point elements. And again, if you open it down, we've got a wide variety of different uh, particle based animations from fire, smoke. Oh, that smoke looks very Harry Potter like. Oh, I really like that one. Okay, let's use this one. So all we're gonna do is hit point. Now it does make it into a new uh, pre-comp again. So I'm going to bring in the sword fight here and I'm just gonna turn it off for the time being now the way that this works is first of all we have a settings layer here it's gonna start and end where stated on the position of this layer if you need it to go on longer you simply just go where the end is drag it from the start and move it forward and then it's going to increase the amount of time that um, it's working. Now the way that this works is we've got this null object. Let's fit this up to the screen. So we've got a start here and this layer says make a keyframe on position property. So we're going to click P, go to the position, hit the keyframe icon, move forward and bring the smoke over here. Move forward again, bring the smoke down. Uh, Maybe I'm gonna loop this smoke. Oh, I'm gonna loop this smoke back on itself a few moments later. Now look at this. We've got this crazy wisp of smoke flying throughout the composition. It uh, looks really cool, very magical. Perhaps you might be seeing something like this in the Harry Bow HBO TV series. Uh, that's very cool. And again, you know, like I, I think what I'm trying to get across is. We don't need to know Stardust in order to use Particle Pro. Particle Pro is just using its engine in order to deliver these really cool animations which look a lot better than sort of like your standard base particle animations you might find within After Effects by itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these keyframes and I'm gonna open up the sword fight. Now, first of all, we need to change the scale of this. I think it's a 4K clip. Now, I've got the sword fight as the bottom layer on this composition, yet I can't see where this smoke wisp is. You know, by all accounts, we're in the middle of the animation. It should be here, but we're not seeing it. Now, remember before in the text and object based uh, menu, I said that we had to mix visible some of the hidden layers. It's the same here. So if I press this, we can actually see the sword fight isn't at the bottom of these at all. So we need to then unhide the layers, then bring the sword fight. Now what we have is the smoke appearing on the top of the footage. Okay, so then very roughly, um, 
I'm going to keyframe this smoke wisp to move along with the stick. I'm very likely gonna edit this out, guys, because I've spent my fair share of tutorials throughout growing up watching the After Effects gurus on YouTube uh, doing this. Uh, there is no reason for you to watch. A few moments later. All right, guys, so we're back. I've done four seconds. I don't think we need to, uh, to really do the full 17 seconds of this to kind of get the gist of what we're doing. Um, if I click play here, let this render. Okay, cool. Now, obviously, <laughs> uh, this doesn't necessarily look completely photorealistic, um, but I think with, with a good hour's work, we could really make this look as if the guy is holding a, a stick which has been just pulled out of the flames of a fire or something along those lines. Um, and again, you know, we, we've got a realistic smoke simulation um, and we don't know Stardust. We're just using the basis of this, this Particle Pro um, extension. And it does some really cool stuff. And I think what I would like is, you know, maybe if we wanted to add one of my favorite effects, Deep Glow, we'll add it to the particles here. Oh, I need to unlock this. Add it to the particles. Oh, now it's looking like some Harry Potter looking aspect. Kind of like a Lumos smell almost. Lumos smell? A Lumos spell almost. That's pretty cool. Let's, let's hit play there and see what that does. So, you know, we're mixing the um, animations up with some different effects. Just, just playing around, just producing some really cool effects uh, without having to dive deep throughout the understanding of, of, of how Stardust works. Uh, this is pretty cool. You know, if I had more time on this, I would really look to see what type of effect I could uh, really pull off. Um, but yeah, and again, if I hide those layers and go up to settings, what we have is your wind, your particle size, the color of the smoke, all the individual parameters that, um, that you might wanna work with uh, in order to create an animation which is more pertained to the effect that you're looking for. Okay, so finally we have the brush elements. So for this one, um, the idea is that you use the brush and it creates an animation based off the brush stroke. I wish this would work on video. It doesn't inherently do so, at least uh, as well as I need it to. Um, and it tends to work a lot best on images. In fact, if you look at the trailer Particle Pro put out, they tend to just use it on images. So I think it might be more of an image-based tool. So let's make a new composition of this uh, image I have of my friend, jumping over a, these are actually concrete blocks to stop tanks invading the shoreline in World War II. A little bit of a history set here. So again, we've got a, a few different um, animations. So we've got Shimmer, which I believe isn't in the other um, menus. Chocolate, why not? Um, let's go for, let's go for Sandstorm. Should we go for Fire? We haven't done something. No, let's go for Sandstorm, that looks cool. So there are two additional uh, parameters here, get color from footage, which is gonna make the sand appear in a similar pixel, uh, in a similar hue to the pixel data it's currently over, and the direction, which is where the uh, sand is gonna blow. He's jumping over to the right, so we're gonna have the sand brush over to the left, so I'm gonna click left here, and um, I'm not gonna click get color from footage for this one. So we're gonna click brush, it's gonna take us to another new composition, and I would be of the understanding that, you, you know, you don't want to fine tune the brush here so it's very small. Just go, you know, 60. So we've got a substantially sized brush. And I'm going to start from this area. Go down the back of him. There, so we've got sort of like a, you know, a bit of, bit of sand or smoke coming off him or whatever it may be. Then we click apply brush. It's going to take us to a new composition. So I'm gonna click play just to let this render out a moment. Now with the brush aspect of this tool, I definitely do find it the weakest when it's in comparison to the point elements and the text and objects. That's why I've left this uh, to last in the tutorial. Um, primarily because it doesn't seem to be that um, 
cohesive with video. Um, and then it's, you know, how often are you really using photos in a video project where you also need it to have some particle based uh, animation. But, you know, the option is there if needed. Uh, one thing that this system does do is that it builds in a sort of like zoom in and zoom out. Zooms in, animation appears, zooms out, the animation starts to end. So that's pretty cool if you are looking to add some additional flair to perhaps, um, you know, maybe it's a sports documentary or something and you've got like some stills of some guys and you just want some fire coming off them or some smoke, whatever it may be. Uh, but yeah, so with that, it's nearly done. So let's just jump back into this. Okay, click play and boom. So yeah, do you know what? You know, it's just like, I don't find this too great. I have said, um, we, we probably could definitely do a fair bit of things with the settings in order to make this look a little bit better. But just personally, from my perspective, um, I've never used the brush aspect because it's not as if I'm using <laughs> um, this to work better on, on, on video, uh, on photos. You can use it on video, um, but because the tracking aspect of the brush animation doesn't really compute, uh, it tends to work better on images. Uh, but do you know what? More options and more uh, tools in your arsenal is always a good thing. But primarily, I like to use this tool for the point elements specifically, and then the text and objects. Okay guys, I've been Lewis with Fidevo. There's not a lot of information online about Particle Pro, so I hope this has kind of opened your eyes um, to what the extension does, how it's used, its weaknesses and its strengths. I definitely think it gives you a very good starting position to then further and enhance the particle simulation, whether that's with more effects or just going into the settings per, um, panel and uh, messing about to create your own form of simulation. Um, and then from here in what you could do is sort of like reverse engineer the particles by going into the particle menu and then running through to see how they were created uh, in Stardust in order to kind of like get a better grip of how that plugin works because it is a beast to tackle. Anyway, I've been Lyrics with Fedevo. If you'd like to see more After Effects content like this, drop us a message, drop us a comment, I should say, in the comment box and I'll catch you guys soon.